Okay, so before we begin, I just want to cover a few points. First and foremost, this video isn't going to be as introductory as most of my videos. I'm going to have to make a couple presumptions in order to get us right into the heart of the matter. However, I'm going to review those with you. Now, if you decide that you'd like to see a video where I go into those steps more in depth as more introductory, then I certainly can do that. I can add a video to this series and put it before this one in the playlist. Anyways, so let's take a look. First, you have downloaded and extracted PHP. Second, you have started the PHP web server from the command prompt. And lastly, the PHP document that we're about to create, it needs to be saved in the document root that PHP identifies when you start the web server. So when you open up the command prompt and you type PHP space dash S to start the web server, PHP will right there tell you what the document root is. That's where the PHP document they're about to make needs to be saved. Okay, so there's two basic ways that you can take a data from a form and transfer it to an access database. The so-called proper way, because it creates an open connection and updates access in real time, would be to have a PHP command that creates a connection when the command executes opens a connection to access, and then you can freely edit a table. You can make changes to the table. You can add rows to the table. We're not going to do that because to make that work, there is a lot of things you have to do before that connection command will work. Like, for instance, you need to set up what's known as a data source, and you need to select the proper drivers in this 32 and 60 four bit versions and sometimes you have to go into the INI the INI file in PHP and uh, basically remove I believe it's a semicolon that is remarking out or causing PHP to ignore looking for access database and a few other things like that so I really don't want to get into all the details but if I was ever to do a video like that I'd really want to focus on just creating the connection and nothing else and troubleshooting because there's a lot of things that go wrong and I don't think I've seen a single source yet that identifies all the things that go wrong. It just seems to work for them, uh, but not for other people. So eventually I'd like to cover a video that handles that, but not for now. What we're going to do is take something a little bit more simpler. And what we're going to do is PHP is going to create a text document or to be more precise, it's going to append new rows to a text document. And then after some interval, Access will import that text document. So basically, what you're going to do is rather than directly accessing the database, you're going to create this holding area where you're putting the data and then access will import it. And there are ways to uh, make that uh, more automated so you don't have to use the import wizard every single time you want to update the table and access. We'll look at a few options of how to automate that. So by doing the latter, what you're really doing is you're creating a queue. You are entering information into a form. You're queuing it up into a, a, a text file. And then, like I said, after a certain interval of time has passed, you then import it into Access. So essentially, you're creating a queue. And one of the problems with that is that means Access will not be updated in real time. So you have some interval, whether it's one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. You're going to have intervals. So be mindful about when you use this. And the second is since the entire file is imported into Access every time, then that means we'll have to do a little data cleanup. That We'll have to take certain steps to make sure that we don't have duplicate records. Maybe we can create a unique key, things like that. Um, also, maybe what we can do is when Access... Uh, imports the file, it then overwrites the file and uh, totally wipes it out, creates a blank one, that kind of thing. So there's a few options we can look at, but that that's the two things I want to have you keep in mind is that you're really creating a queue and that the database is not being updated in real time and that the um, you, there's some data integrity issues, mainly data duplication that you have to be uh, uh, be careful of. So let's begin. So the bulk of this tutorial is going to be the writing of the PHP document. Now I'm going to write this in Microsoft Visual Studio. You can use whatever text editor you want. You could just use Notepad if you want. But if you use a text editor that's designed to facilitate coding, there are certain benefits. 
Now, with Microsoft Visual Studio, if I choose File, and I choose New, and I choose File, it gives me a type, uh, a list of file types. Now, even though I want a PHP file, I'm actually going to start with an HTML, because by choosing HTML, it will put a basic HTML skeleton into place, a basic HTML structure into place, so it saves you that extra typing. So even though it's going to start as HTML, one of the things that you're going to see me do in a few minutes is actually change the file extension to PHP. But we'll get to that. So this is the structure. This is the skeleton I was talking about. So rather than having to manually type this out, it does it for you. And there's really nothing you have to change with that. For those of you who are not familiar with HTML, that's really a separate tutorial. But I will point out a couple of things and that you have these sections and that you have this tag at the beginning and then a reciprocal tag at the end showing that this entire section is the head section. Likewise, this entire section is the body section because again, you have these bookends, you have body and then slash body, just as you had head and then slash head. Likewise, you have HTML and then slash HTML. So you have like these bookends letting you know what is occurring in that section. So what we're going to do is we're going to be working with the body section. So let's just put a couple spaces here so it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, we are going to declare that this is a form. So form action equals page1.php. Now you can call this whatever you want, okay? But in our case, what we're going to do, this needs to match this, which it currently doesn't. So as I mentioned, we will eventually rename this as a PHP and we'll get rid of that at the beginning. So this is going to be named, the, uh, will be the name of the file that it's embedded in. Method post. There's different ways of handling the information that you put into the form, but uh, we're going to use post like there's get, there's post. I'm not going to go into the differences, just suffice to say that post works for our, our purposes. Now what you're going to do is you're going to start typing out what you want the form to say. Okay, let's paste this in here and then walk through it. So book name with a colon. This is purely display text. It's information for the end user and isn't being processed as far as part of the data capture. So now we're saying that we need input. Well, we have to declare what kind of input. It's going to be text. So basically that creates an open text box that they can type in. And the name is book name. So this is the name of the field that we just put. So book name is the name of the text box that you just created. So now it's rinse and repeat. We will take this, we'll copy, we'll paste, and now we just make a few changes. Let's call it book author and again this is just text this isn't going to be captured by um, the form it's being displayed for the end user so they know what to enter but it's not actually being processed in any other way again we want an input what kind of input it's going to be a text box and then name will be book author And then one more time, let's call this book cover. Well, we'll say type. Again, this is just text, so you don't necessarily have to have a consistent naming convention. Again, we need to say that there's going to be an input. What kind of type? It's text. So again, it's going to create a text box. And then the name will be book cover. And again, this is the name of this field. Okay, so far so good. Now let's just add a line break here. And if you're not familiar with HTML, adding spaces does absolutely nothing. The spaces are ignored. So you'll see these will actually all be on the same line. And now we're going to add a new input type. So just as we said input type here, rather than text, it's going to be submit. So it's going to be a button. But 
we don't want the default value on the button. So the button by default says something like submit query. Well, you're not actually doing a search, you're doing data entry. So after you do input type, you can add this value. This is an optional argument, but by putting this here, you can then change what the button will say. It will say add record. So now that the form itself is in place, let's give this a test run. So you might have noticed that up here, this changed. There was a splice in the file. I had to double check something before continuing. But anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to do the housekeeping that I mentioned a little bit earlier. We're, we're going to save this file, and then we're going to rename the extension. So file, save. And this is what I mentioned at the beginning of the video, where when you start the PHP server, it will tell you what the root document is. So this document that you're saving needs to be in that root. So we're going to call this page one. And I can't just type PHP here because it'll just still save it as an HTML. So we'll just type page one. We'll save it. We'll then, here's the page one that we just looked at. You can just change the extension here. And now it will be treated like a PHP document. Again, it's just a text document. So you're just saying which program you want to run this. So. Again, we needed to save this document in the root document that the PHP server declared when you ran it. It needs to be a PHP extension. And we needed to make sure that this in our form action matches this. And what we'll do is we'll probably close this out so that we can load it up as a PHP document. Now what we want to do is we want to go to Internet Explorer or whatever browser you want. And we're going to type in the address that you use to start the PHP server. So let's go over to our browser, although it's actually Edge, not Internet Explorer. And let's break down the address that you need to type in. So localhost 4000. Why that? Well, if you use the default settings when you're starting up the PHP web server, you would type in php-s localhost 4000. So there it is, localhost 4000. Then PHP says, by the way, here's the document root. This is where PHP will be looking for the document. Well, we put a subfolder in here. So we have to declare that. So localhost 4000 forward slash and then there's the folder we created, although I created it before the tutorial started. And then you have to say, all right, what's the actual document you want to display? So, so far, you're just saying where. Where are we looking? It's not until this last part that you say what we're looking at. So we want to look at page1.php. And if you recall, that's the document that we've been working on. So we enter that. And there's our form. Book name, book author, book cover type, and Add record. Now, just to be clear, this is a form, but it doesn't actually capture anything. It doesn't actually save anything. We'll look at that really in the next tutorial. This one is basically putting the form into place. The next one will be how to take those values, store them, and then transfer that to the Access database. So I hope this has been helpful so far. And if you have any questions, just let me know. And again, if you want to see something that's more introductory that shows you Here's the download, here's the extraction, here is the setting up of the uh, PHP server, although I did just run that command now. Uh, we can certainly talk about that if you'd like, so just uh, let me know.